that day comes. I've seen enough of war between the gods. But you, little brother, who can say? We could beach the boat here. We're not getting in there without a key. Good. Tears braziers, a symbol of the light that binds all realms together. Why would he use those strange runes, though? Now you mention it, he wouldn't. Huh. These are the ones I can't read. Focus up, boy. Come <laughs> on. 
Ed, you are full of stories. When will you tell one that entertains? I beg your pardon? He just insulted you. Yeah, I got that. So you want a cork or do you? Very well, my brothers. I'll tell you the story of Runia, the brawler. The real story. There was a huge battle, right? The shrine had him in the middle, fighting off Aesir. A pretty story, but no. Rungnir, you see, was born with neither head nor heart. So the giants had to complete him with stone. He was strong, to be sure, but also a perfect simpleton. Odin met him wandering in Midgard one day. Found him so amusing, so harmless, so gullible, that he invites him back to his palace in Asgard. There he gives Rungnir his fill of mead and goads him into all manner of boasts and antics, all for the amusement of the court. I was there. I saw the Aesir laugh as Hrungnir leapt upon his shield and swore he'd kill us all and take our womenfolk back to Jotunheim. Then Thor shows up. And does he laugh? Oh, no. Thor takes one look at the drunken stone buffoon and brings down Mjolnir on his head so hard that he's got chunks of Hrungnir in his own skull to this day. Thor is so startled by the face full of rock he doesn't notice Hrungnir's body topple right onto him with a sickening crunch. Hey, Mimir. Nothing like the one's mother told me. Let that be a lesson, my son. Truth is seldom so pretty. Myth and legend. We can beach about here. These bones pulse with magic. It must be Golvi. Could we... Could we just hold on to it? Maybe we'll find the rest of them. This spirit lies to you, boy. How would you know? I have known many spirits. They are all liars. This one is different. I know it. You know very little. wonder what became of him. Wait, Fafnir? Like, Fafnir's storeroom, Fafnir? The very one. But Sindri said he was a dwarf. He was, and now he's a dragon. Funny how life works, isn't it? He's chained up. Perhaps we should keep an eye out for binding shrines and free the poor bastard. Hi, lads. Dragon, oh, he's no friend of mine. His throat was a constant source of annoyance amongst Aesir and Vanir alike. Then why free him? Trust the recently liberated brother. No one deserves to be held captive by this. 
Look here. Hold on. Let me read this. question Ed. how did this dwarf become a dragon well, i don't know for certain though i'd wager his pension for stealing magical artifacts had something to do with it stealing a trinket from the wrong banier goddess Ugh! <laughs> 